Hello, my name is Liz Schlemer, and this is a video for IME 443 Facilities Planning and Design at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. This particular video covers the number of workstations. So again, we're always looking at excellent engineering within a context. This particular video talks about the, some, some quantitative methods that are necessary in order to determine space requirements. But we always must remember we're doing this within a context, within a context of people and environment and planet and social expectations. The, to the topics associated with facilities design are laid out here. This particular video fits in the area of layout design, and in the systematic approach, we're still in step number four, determining space requirements. So when we talk about the number of workstations, there's kind of three quantitative methods we're going to be looking at, capacity analysis, man and machine balancing, and line balancing. This video covers the first two. In capacity analysis, the question is how many similar workstations do we need in order to produ produce a, a particular number of parts in a period of time, given how long each task takes to make the part. When we're talking about man-machine balancing, we're asking about how many machines can one person operate, given independent machine time, independent operator time, and concurrent operating time. In line balancing, we ask, how should we arrange the tasks into workstations so that the work is evenly, is equal for each workstation? In capacity analysis, we want to consider scrap and rework um, if, because if people are working on sort of non-productive items, we want to include that actually in the work time, in the work requirements. We also are concerned about the efficiency of the work and the efficiency of the machinery. So when we're looking at um, reject allowance, this is an example. If there's 5% scrap rate, how many items should you purchase to produce 3,500 good parts per month? So sometimes it's, um, it's un not intuitive to think about it, but we have to put it in this particular order. The raw material input times 1 minus the scrap rate is equal to the production output. So when we're looking at the raw material, we need to take what's required and divide it by 1 minus the scrap rate. So in this case, the raw material input required is 36,842 in order to get 35,000 good parts per month. Now the now from there we want to we might want to understand how long it's going to take to process all of these. So in this example, if it takes 2.8 minutes per part on a milling machine and you need to process 2,000 units in 8 hours, how many machines do you need? The workers work at 95% efficiency and the milling machine will be working 80% of the time, which is also um, referred to as reliability. So we want to look at the hours required, um, looking at and divide it by the hours um, available. So the hours required are the time per part times the production required divided by the efficiency. And the hours available are the time available times the reliability. And we take the hours required and divide it by the hours available in order to get the number of machines. So in this example then, we're going to take the 2.8 minutes and we're going to multiply it by 60 um, divide it by 60 actually, that should be a divide sign there, um, because we want to convert this into hours and um, then we have 2,000 parts that are required to be processed and it's 95 percent efficient. So in order to do that we need 98.25 hours. The amount of time we have available in a day is 8 hours but it's only up 80 percent of the time so actually we only have 6.4 hours available. Therefore, the number of machines is going to be the 98.25 divided by 6.4, or we're going to need 15.3 machines. Now, we can't really use a 0.3 machine, so we round it up to 16 machines. So in the next example, we're going to go through looking at man-machine balancing and how that works. So in this example, you want to find out how many CNC machines to assign to each operator. The time to unload one part and to load the next part is three minutes. During this time, the machine is stopped. It takes 20 minutes to run a part, and the operator must inspect um, each part, which takes five minutes. The inspection is done on the workbench. It also takes a half a minute to travel between machines. So in this situation, we need to understand what is the, what's called 
independent operator time, independent machine time, and concurrent time. So if we look at this problem, that what we're concerned about is deciding what the concurrent time is and the machine time and the independent time is. And then if we know those, we can do a calculation where we can find the number of um, optimum machines that are necessary. So concurrent time is 3 minutes, which is the load and unload time. The machine run time is 20 minutes. And the independent operator time is 5 minutes for inspection plus a half a minute for travel. So if we take A plus T divided by A plus B, we can get a 2.7 machines that are necessary that are the best balance for each person. But we can't assign 2.7 machines. We can only assign two or three. So if we assign two, it would cause the employee to be idle part of the time. If there was three, the machine would be idle part of the time. So now the question is, which is better, two or three? And when we do that, what we're going to do is calculate the total cost, this TC value, for um, two machines and for three machines. So we're going to look at M, where M is greater than N. So in this case, we'll be looking at the first line is for when there's three machines. If M is less than N, that's two machines. And we'll calculate the total cost this way. And we'll choose the minimum total cost. So you can see here, when I have a cost to run the machine at $55 and a cost of an operator at $40, we do the total cost calculation for two machines and get $17.25. For three machines, we do the calculation and we get $17.45. Therefore, it's the minimum cost at two machines. So we assign two operators, two machines for each operator. Now the next video will look at line balancing.